delightful, fun, contagious laugh came alive on stage. Surrounded by touching family photos, Audrey Carlson remembers her daughter, Elizabeth. She was a lot of fun. Her sister, Leslie, just 15 months younger than her, says they grew up like twins. Beautiful and poised and loved dance and performance and super studious. It's been more than 20 years since Elizabeth Carlson was killed in this very home by her ex-boyfriend, shot multiple times in front of Leslie. He broke into our house. He laid in wait upstairs in this house while my sister and I were home. When my sister and I went upstairs to look for something that he had stolen, he shot her to death seven times. All those years ago, the Carlsons accepted a plea deal, as did Elizabeth's killer, Jonathan Carney. He'd served 42 years for murdering Elizabeth. When you accept that, you tuck that away and you say, I don't need to deal with this for another 42 years. He cannot get out. Several weeks ago, they found out Carney had applied for commutation through the Board of Pardons and Paroles. I go back into the PTSD where I can't breathe, and a lot of emotions resurface. I had to refocus myself and figure out how we were going to navigate through this. Carney was able to get a pre-screen review to determine if there was merit to grant him an actual hearing. For this review, families have the right to submit letters on the victim's behalf. The Carlsons rallied the troops, more than 1,000 letters sent. Believe it or not, there were people that wrote in that we don't even know. On the day of the review, three board members sat while the family watched as it streamed on the web. Leslie says it was over in a minute, the board rejecting his application, citing the seriousness of the conviction, Carney continuing to serve his sentence being in the interest of justice, and there being no extraordinary circumstances which would favor commutation. Um, so I went from being really, really happy and really grateful to being infuriated. After reading the board's policies and learning that Carney can try to reapply for commutation in three years. It's horribly unfair. It's unjust. It's, un it's outrageous that we have to relive the same thing again and again until he's released. This whole process brings you back to that initial day. I had to push my sister's body off of the door to get into the room to see just in time that he was reloading his gun. So for someone who in their commutation application said that their goal that day was to commit suicide in front of my sister to hurt her, he shot her seven times. He chased me down the street. He had over 20 bullets on him. The family wants changes made to the board's commutation policy. They're asking the board to not allow anyone who has taken a plea deal for murder or capital murder and is over the age of 25 to be eligible for commutation. They also want inmates to not be able to reapply for five years instead of three. We don't want families like us and other families to have to go through this so regularly. We spoke with the Board of Pardons and Paroles to understand the process and the policies. In June of 2021, the board updated its commutation policies. It actually put in place more restrictive requirements for inmates applying. Before that, any inmate could apply if they'd served at least four years. Now inmates would have to have a sentence of greater than 10 years and would have to have served at least 10 of them to be eligible, among other new requirements. But Elizabeth's family believes these newer requirements are still not narrow enough. The policy with commutation is way too broad. The board did give us a statement saying, in this particular case, Jonathan Carney received a denial letter from the board which cited the board's reasons for denying his application and not granting him a commutation hearing. Also stated in this letter, he was notified he could only reapply if there was new, compelling information not included or considered by the board in his original application. The board did provide us that denial letter, and we can confirm that new is even in bold format. So what constitutes new information? The board says it involves a number of factors, but would have to be extenuating. The Carlsons, though, say that they don't think he should be able to reapply again, saying the reasons he was denied a hearing in the first place aren't going to change. Either way, if Carney tries to reapply in three years claiming to have new information, the board confirms that it will trigger another notification to the Carlsons as required by statute. Ben.